Hi, thank you for tuning into Reubet Support YouTube channel. My name is Mayank and in this video we will talk about rules. So this is going to be our agenda for today. First, we will look into outbound rules, net rules and traffic rules. So let's cover up all these things in a quick demo. Now all the rules related information can be found under rule section. Here you can see three different tabs, outbound, net and traffic rules. As we all know that using rules we can regulate access to any application or a zone etc for a user or a subnet. And this can be fine tuned as per the requirement. So let's start with the basic definition of outbound rules. Outbound or internal rules defines the policy for internal users and device accessing internal or external applications. It's easy to remember with the name itself. Outbound means traffic living from the site or a zone and internal means it is for internal users. So what I mean to convey here is that if you want to fine tune and regulate the traffic for any internal user that can be regulated from here. If I look at the rules, I can see there are two rules already in place which are by default created when the organization was created. If we look at the rules which are self-explanatory that rule number one is for guests. Next rule is for all users except users in the guest zone. This rule can also be fine tuned as per the requirement. Again using this action item button we can create a new rule. Set the position, name the rule, apply the site scope. If you want to leave it blank then it will be applied to all the sites. After selecting the site it can be fine tuned to users, devices and groups. Zones, classic VPN remote networks, specific hosts, registered devices, guests and all excluding guests. With the simple click of this toggle button will allow or deny the traffic to any of these destination targets which can be internet, zones, classic VPN or selected application or group. To delete the rule, select the rule and on top right click on the actions drop down menu and delete. One thing to remember that rules are passed from top to bottom. If the conditions set in the rule matches then the rule is applied. If the conditions set in the rule don't match then the rule isn't applied and the system moves on to the next rule and so on. Now moving on to the inbound net rules. As the name itself clearly says that it is the policy for incoming traffic from outside to any of the internal application. Inbound rules offer optional support for NAT, port translations and external host whitelist. Because the gateways use a firewall system, you need the rules to allow traffic for both outbound and inbound access. Everything is blocked until a rule is created to allow access. Again, NAT rules can be used to control any service that you want to be advertised to the outside world. To create the NAT rule, name the rule. Select your internal application which you want to be accessed from outside. I have created this sample application for demo purpose. Next, select the uplink over which you want to allow access to the application. Choose from no net, destination net or full net mode. Where no net means no netting will be done. Destination means that only destination socket will be replaced. And full net means source socket IP port pair as well as destination socket will be replaced for both forward and reverse netting directions respectively. Reflection flag is enabled by default which means that internal users can access this application using external IP or host name. It can be disabled if you want to restrict the internal users from accessing this application. Here you can specify the whitelist host names which you want to allow access to the application. Once everything is configured click on submit which will create a new inbound net rule for us. Now if you want to delete the net rule, just select the rule and on the top right, delete the rule. Let's move on to the last rule type which is the traffic path rule. Use case of this is the path selection and QoS. You can specify the source and destination over multiple paths and use the matrix to determine the lossy link which moves the traffic to the next available uplink when path to avoid any compromises on the service quality. A new traffic rule can be created from here. 
Select the position of the rule. Provide a customized name. Select the site scope. Select the source and destination application. Over here, you can select the uplink when path type to be used for this type of traffic in sequence. If you want, you can change the sequence which can be changed from these arrow buttons. Many customers ask this question that what is the difference between latency sensitive and interactive metrics. Well, latency sensitive uses the latency, jitter and packet loss while interactive uses latency and data loss to determine the best possible path for the traffic flow. So if a path preference is specified, the gateway selects from the preference order specified and if a path quality profile is also specified, then the gateway chooses the best path based on the measured data metrics from the paths defined in the path preferences, except for the data center SDI 5030 Panther nodes. Fall through is enabled by default where the traffic falls through the next set of traffic path rules for a potential match. Last but not the least, we can configure the QS priority from automatic custom DSCP to urgent, high, normal and low. With that being said, I'll wrap up the demo and thank you for watching this video.